So English metrical phonology is hard. It's non-trivial to learn. First of all, for the same reason that it's hard to learn lots of stuff about language, it's that there are many data points that are ambiguous for which parameter value or, or constraint ranking they implicate. And, you know, again, this is a normal problem for language acquisition. We call it poverty of the stimulus when the data are compatible with many alternative hypotheses. So again, here we have parameters whose values, whose values must be set, or maybe we have constraints where you want to decide which constraint is more important in the language, right, and they're conflicting. Okay, so that's a normal problem. A less normal problem, and one that is true of English metrical phonology, is that there are many irregularities, right? And this is maybe less common for acquisition. Usually there aren't a lot of exceptions to the system being acquired, um, but in English metrical phonology there certainly are. So first of all, there are interactions with morphology. So for example, if you add certain types of morphology that are productive, this doesn't change the stress pattern, even though all grammars that we have been looking at these different representations would base their stress patterns on the syllables present in the word. So if you add syllables, you're probably changing something. But we don't see that. So early, earlier, same stress pattern. Pretty, prettiest, right? You add that morphology, you still have the same pattern. Sensation, sensational, sensationally, right? Still the same stress pattern even in your adding syllables, right? So that's not expected under these approaches. And there are also interactions with syntactic categories. So for example, stress counters may be different across syntactic categories, even though the syllabic word form doesn't change. So we have this set of nouns versus verbs that have this underlying syllabic word form. So conduct, your conduct versus conduct, right? You both have, both of them have con, which is a vowel consonant sort of syllable, and duct, which is a vowel followed by two consonants in its in its uh, rhyme part. Same form, different stress contours. Desert versus dessert, right? Same form, different stress patterns. Suspect, suspect, right? Same, right? So this is a category-based thing that has nothing to do with the syllabic word form. And both of these appear in the language, right? Which is, again, tricky because this means that you can have multiple stress contours associated with a single syllabic word form. And, you know, for example, a syllabic word form would be a syllable that has a short vowel like ke or a uh or a uh over here and a long vowel in the second syllable. So t, way, or o, right? These all have the same form. But you can see a kitty away, uh-oh, right? These have very different stress contours. So you have multiple stress contours. This is problematic because the grammar in parametric representations is only going to be able to generate a single stress contour per form. Or if it's a constraint system, select a single stressed word form, right? No matter what it is, you only get to pick one. And that's a problem because there's more than one, right? This is your basic issue. So the upshot of multiple stress contours is no one grammar can account for all the stressed words in the input. You're going to have to deal with the fact that there are exceptions, right? So how big of a problem is this in English child-directed speech? Well, so we did an analysis uh, in a couple years back on a corpus of American English speech directed at children between the ages of 6 and 12 months around the time you might start figuring out some of the metrical phonology patterns if you're an English child. And it turns out this happens a lot, right? So no matter which of these different representations you're looking at, because they all make slightly different distinctions over what counts as the forms you're looking for, like a bunch of them, 73 of 123 over half, 86 of 149 over half, 166 of 452 over a third, have multiple stress contours, right? You're not going to be able to account for everything, right? So this means that maybe you need to sort of adjust your goals for acquisition is to identify a grammar that can account for a good portion of the word level stress patterns in the language because you're not going to be able to actually handle them all.